you know, I mean, everything is just the the government has got stuff so screwed up, so bad that they to for them to keep the power that they have taken for themselves through the years to keep this power, even though the people don't want them to have it, they've had to turn to tyranny. In other words, they make people do things. I told you, I've been in the restaurant business. I've made stories, I've told stories about how the health department does stuff. And these these are ways they get to starting by bullying. They start bullying you and then they start fining you and then they start using brute force on you. And uh, like I say, uh, I say, when I came back from Vietnam, I say, I've, I've got skills that are unique. They're not everyday usable skills, <laughs> but they're unique. And um, when I came back from Vietnam, I, I wanted to start a, a SWAT team, and it was going to be hostage rescue, because they didn't, nobody knew how to rescue hostages. I know how to rescue hostages. So that's what I was, I was trying to get all this stuff done. And, I've, and that's another story. I'm not going to get into it. But I say eventually I started training SWAT teams. And, and everybody, a lot of people think, well, there's no way. You're not even a policeman. There's no way you can do this. Okay. And right back to the same thing. I had skills that they recognized and they could use. And so I helped them uh, train SWAT teams. We specialized in hostage rescue. Uh, I mean, that's what we do. And uh, so I, I was able to have a contact with the strong arm part of the government, the enforcers. <laughs> See, I, I got a contact with them. And so that kept me immune from the the bully type tactics uh, because like I say I was teaching the bullies even though I wasn't teaching them the bully tactics uh, they knew me and knew of me so that kind of protected me and then uh, from really the, the local state and local authorities and then uh, like I say federal started getting and that's what's been, that's what I'm saying. We could see now the federal government uh, is arming the the police and sheriff departments and the, the the enforcers. They're arming them, and the price to pay to be armed is you do what we tell you. More being a tyrant, they're even the federal is even a tyrant to the enforcers. The enforcers are intimidated and they have to do what they're told. Uh, uh, I shot that guy in the convenience store in Topeka, ball place. And uh, uh, the state of Kansas, I was the first person to use concealed carry to stop a crime in progress. The state attorney general saw fit to prosecute me. And so um, I started using, like I say, my the skills I picked up through the years. And one of the skills, like I say, is uh, people skills. And so I started getting a hold of the people that passed the concealed carry law. And they invited me for this dinner, and it was a big old fancy dinner. And um, especially it was funny because they nobody knew I was going to be there. Nobody even knew. I mean, nobody knew. Uh, the guy that put it on, that the, they signed the the, the the law for concealed carry. Uh, I I called them and I told them well, the the state's going to prosecute. Going to, the state attorney general's coming to prosecute me. And he said, "Oh, don't worry about it. Here, we'll have supper." He says, "Come on over, we'll have supper." And so that was the first time he knew of me. And so I came to the supper. And he didn't, he said, there's going to be some of my friends there. And there was. The, the state senators and representatives and everybody was back to Bill. And so they were there. So it was, a, it was a big thing. And it was funny 
because I was all ready to give them hell because one of the they passed the bill on the seatbelt law and uh, I was ready to get in I mean I was gonna get in their ass I was gonna tear them up and so I'm over here sitting there and all these senators and representatives they're all talking and talking and talking and then you know a lot of it was based on me on you know who am I to you know because you know I'm unique and they, they just were shocked that they had somebody of my qualifications in the state you know so and then uh, uh, I, I, and then I asked him, well, what's the story on this seatbelt law? Man, I was already getting their shit. And then he says, he says, man, you know, the, the federal government takes our money, our highway funds. They take them. And then they issue it back to us. They take the money and then they give it back to us. Only if we were to pass the seatbelt law. And that's just like when they passed the 55 mile an hour speed limit back in the 70s, it's the same thing. Uh, that's how the federal government would put the pressure on. And so even the states don't have control over their own state laws. And those guys were really pissed that they had to pass that seatbelt law. So that's a sign of tyranny. In other words, these are these, okay, the reason they're supposed to make laws, they're supposed to be representatives, representing us. And they're supposed to be making these wise decisions. They're supposed to be the wiser ones of us. And they end up, they're all being intimidated. And either the state intimidates the counties, you know, or the federal intimidates the states. And so, and that's what's been going on. So it's one bullying the other and bullying the other and now we're to the point we're past the bullying and we are into I would say full-scale tyranny um, the let's see was a land the uh, Bureau of Land Management you know there's a good example uh, here they have administrative problems uh, something that, that should be taken care of by a fine. Uh, even though I don't want to get into the legal part of it because I really don't know the legal part of it. But I do know one thing. It's not a death penalty for not going by this particular regulation that they have. I mean, they're, they're, they are killing people over regulations. Not even immoral laws even though there are immoral laws that's not even the immoral laws that they're killing people for uh, it's to the point like I say it is tyranny it is executions is what they're doing I mean they are to the point that they kill somebody because they are reaching you know, I mean, we went from the point from, in my days, so you have a gun, so what? And then you pull it out and you point at me, put the damn gun down. What are you, a nut? You drunk? What's the matter with you? We've gone to that to he's reaching for something. It could be a gun. And then they kill you. You're being executed. These are signs of tyranny. These are signs our government has gone really bad beyond the bully. They're tyrants and they're out of control. That's why I push the three man militia. The only the only sure way that I know of being safe is taking care of myself. And if I can take care of myself, I can take care of the people around me. And if the people around me have the same attitude, we can make it through this mess. This is Mike. No stress Mike. Not calm.